So as promised, Elon Musk have actually made Grog open source. On the 11th of March, he said that he will make Grog open and available to everybody. And on the 17th, Grog's page on Twitter have actually shared that on their bio. So if you go to Grog's account and click on the bio, we will basically open this uh, source that will say that we can download the 318 gigabytes on our machine. Now, before going to the specifications themselves, this is a very big moment for the open source community because here on Andrew Keen's page, we can see that Smog 72B and Llama 65B are basically dwarfs compared to Grok is four times as big as the number two, which is small. So this is a very significant event for the entire open source community. And if we go back to uh, Grok's tweet weights in bio, we see that uh, OpenAI basically references another tweet about them stealing their jokes with this, uh, with this tweet. And then Elon Musk literally clapped back by saying, what do you mean by open in the parts of OpenAI? So... So there's a lot of back and forth between OpenAI and uh, Elon Musk and Grok in this regard. But now going back to the more important things, which is specifications, the specs of the model. It is a 314 billion parameters MOE uh, model. The, the base model is not fine-tuned, so you can literally ask it whatever you want. It's still going to answer. Uh, it's an eight experts with two active at any given time. And uh, there is 86 billion active parameters, of course, related to the two active experts that we have. And the Apache 2.0 license, which is very important, meaning that you can modify, you can use it in private, use it in public, sell it, do whatever you want with it. It is open source. You can literally do whatever you want. And here we have the code if you want to set it up on our machine. So they have provided the code as well, which is very good. It's so easy to set it up. So other important things that we have to mention about Grok is the fact that the embedding size is 6,144. So it is very, very large. And even in uh, models from OpenAI, like the text embedding large, it's only 3,000. So the vector is very large. And also the maximum input is 8,192. Now, this is not at the same level as, let's say, for example, a Claude Opus or a GPT-4 or Gemini but it is still a very large input. And what we have with Grok that we don't have with other things is the fact that it has direct access to real-time data from X, and it's also trained on data from X. So we have a complete data that we can't find somewhere else with the same quality. So that is very important, which give you a different feel of the type of information that you can find when you are dealing with Grok. But of course, the biggest problem with this is not the storage that you need for 318, you have literally uh, commercial machines with terabytes of storage. The problem, of course, is the computational power that we need in order to run this model. So to run this model, we need a DGX H100, which is very expensive. So here we can see that the DGX A100 is basically worth 200K at launch. That was what, what it was worth before. The DGX H100 will cost in the 300K range so it is extremely, extremely expensive. It's not going to be for private commercial use. It's going to be for companies. One last thing I wanted to mention about it is how does it stack against other models? So I found a Medium uh, article about this from Lucas Maza. And in here, we can find benchmarks with Grok basically outperforming the original GPT 3.5 from OpenAI with a huge difference on the human evaluation of 15%. So uh, I would say it's a good enough model. It's not at the same level as, let's say, a Claude 2, but still has, again, access to real-time data from X. So we should give credit to Elon Musk to give their model as open source. Of course, it's not going to be the latest model, the fine-tuned model, but it is a good enough model that they have basically created. So yeah, that has been all. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.